point like, that you have the same chance to escape the fate of these soldiers. Tonight, you by three ghosts. Visited by three ghosts. I think I'd rather not, Jake. But I'll serve business. You can I hope to shun the path oh, I should. They will come to you. One by one. One by one. Couldn't I have them all at once and just get it over with? What? They'll have to take them. Or not at all. Very well, Jacob. I'll take them. My time with you is almost up. Jacob, you are always a good friend. Will we meet again? In your case. Still double barred and locked. It's what I thought it was. It was all a hallucination. That was all. I probably just a bit of beef or some undigested potatoes. That's all it was. Ah, oh, getting upset over nothing. I'm gonna have to stop eating late like this. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, oh, bed. Oh, I feel so good. Oh. You, the first spirit? I am the ghost of Prince New Country Lane now overgrown with me. And through city streets, your bitter heart has barricades from the sight of memory. Walk into the school that you attended as a child. Do you remember the way? Oh, remember it? I could walk it blindfolded. You recall a young boy who had to spend his Christmas holidays alone? Yes. yes, I was that boy. You know, I wish now... I have never mind. What does it matter? It's nothing. Just that there was a child who came to my doorway last night singing a Christmas carol. I wish now that I had given her something. She was so small to be alone in the world. The way I was when I was at school. But you were not always alone. One Christmas Eve, your little sister came to take you home for the holiday. Your father had grown kinder. Fan, a little fan, a gentle flower that a breath could wither. She died a woman, leaving children, I believe. Yes, one child. Your niece? Yes, my niece. Now open the blind and recall old memory and look upon a Christmas 40 years ago. Colorful. 
Oh, look at those great baskets of chestnuts and, and pyramids of apples and oranges and pears. Even the air smells different. Yes, in here the bricks are all gone for floating through a thousand kitchens where we did it. Meat, pie, cake, cinnamon, and baking bread. Oh, it makes me feel almost faint. Your long lost turner is coming back. Mm. There's my charwoman, Mrs. Dilbert, and that Hawkins fellow. It's nice of you to have it at your house for dinner. Nobody likes to eat alone on Christmas Day. It isn't every day that you get an invitation from a common widow like yourself. Oh, go along with you. It isn't every day I get a chance to entertain a gentleman who can appreciate my cooking. If there was one thing Mr. Dilbert could do well, it was to eat. It must be hard for you without a husband to bring home the bacon. There ain't much bacon now. I've been saving up three months for Christmas dinner. I can hardly wait. I hope you won't be disappointed, Mr. Hawkins. This skinny little chicken the butcher gave me for a looks mighty tough. The seasoning I sprinkle from my wine will give their humble feast, their humble dinner, the flavor of a rich man. Might, might that work such a miracle on any dinner on this day? Anyone can leave. Ooh, what's that cooking over there in this pot? Why don't you find that? <laughs> ah, potatoes! But they look a lot tastier than the way I think. I could have sworn that pot was covered. I taste a little. Go ahead. Mmm. Mmm. This is delicious. Mmm. Not too much. I miss my breakfast. Don't make up for it here. Oh, that will not be up for dinner. Ah. Ooh. Italian olives. Well, 
a lot of different things, but I'll tell you, it would even fall on the Scrooge. It's not that strong. He said that Christmas is a humbug. And he believed it, too. More shame for him. He's a comical old fellow, in a pathetic sort of way. He's very rich. Or at least you always tell us so. Well, yes, but what of it, dear? His money is of no use to him. He doesn't do any good with it. It doesn't make him, it doesn't even get used to make himself comfortable. He hasn't the satisfaction of thinking that he'll ever pass it on to us. <laughs> and he makes an enormous profit in his business. But how does it profit him? It doesn't. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers most by his ill whims? He does himself. He takes it into his head to dislike us so he won't come here and have any fun with us. He wouldn't feel so grumpy if he just enjoyed himself once in a while and join us in a silly game every now and then, huh? I say, why don't we play a game? Blind man's buff, and I'll be it. Oh, I know why Topper wants to play. I don't say he cheats, but he does always manage to find Betty's sister, even with the blind man's bluff blindfold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather play some kind of guessing game. That's fun. I like that better. Let Rodrigo pick a subject for us to guess. All right. I have it. I'm thinking of an animal. A savage animal? <coughs> Ferocious. Can it be seen in London? Yes. Is it, is, it, is it kept in a zoo? No. In a circus? Does this animal run loose on the streets? It doesn't run. He walks. On four legs? No. On two legs? Yes. Is it a bear? Not technically, but he does growl. Does he eat people? Gobbles them up whole and their houses too. <laughs> Is it a termite? Termites don't eat people, silly. Did you ever hear a termite growl? <laughs> I haven't the foggiest notion of what it is. Well, I'll give you a clue. This animal not only gobbles up a house, but it gobbles up... My time is almost done. Our spirits lie so short. I am the ghost of the present, Christmas Day, this midnight. The world will go back to its philosophy of choosing the world, of doggy dog. Oh. 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 